obvious system. Doesn't matter where you come from, I would say, you follow along with your system, you just follow it through. And about this. This is your one-wheel road. Take a left up here. So we've just left the one-way system. Help this back lane where it's a lot quieter. High Ford House is a good point, vocal point. We look for this balcony and take a left up here. This is a naughty climb. Very nice, really short work with it, so that's really nice. We're basically going to follow this road now, all the way up to a track, past Jenkins Crag, and head for Chowbeck. Unfortunately, this is a climb, and it continues up rocky, take like a rocky staircase climb. Uh, good thing is, you'll be coming back this way. So, at least we've got a fun descent. Hey, look out for this sign. Uh, Jenkins Crag, follow this one. Uh, to your right, it's Windermere. On the side for Skelgill Woods. Right. This is where the trail starts to become interesting. Hey, hey, hey. So again, all the stuff riding up to Troutbeck. We're going to be riding back. So you have got a really good front descent as well as a nightmare climb. First thing about going this way up it gives you a chance to have a look at what line you want to take when you come back. There you go. Left. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Take a left from down there and then people. Now, we literally are just following this main track all the way to Trout Bay. Oh. Oh. They can't ride this on a pedally bike, but it does destroy you. It's good fun seeing you need help. this is what you're going to be riding down the way back don't be fooled it is rocky and it is steep so while you're here pushing your bike up it's a good opportunity just to have a look at it and see what line you want to take and there we go nice gnarly and rocky so here we have our first real challenge to get up Oh, shit. It is slippy the day. Back wheel's just washing out. So just be aware. When this gets wet, it is extremely slippy. Oh, my God. Back wheel washing out again. Well, I really hoped I was going to get up here the day on the e-bike. Back wheel is spinning like crazy. Still not sure because these back wheels are tires. Oh, but that's just really greasy like that. That was an absolute fail. Back wheel constantly washing out on the rocks. 
no traction whatsoever. Oh. On the right here, I just combed up this hole in the wall. That's Jenkins Craig. This is a little viewpoint of a looking wing in here. Uh, anyway, back to the tears. I don't know if it's poor tyre choice. I guess that's really greasy the day. Um, this is always a challenge and not a climb regardless. But I thought the day I'd find it a walk in a park on an e-bike. I have always said on this ride, that's one of the rides that's best done in the dry. Yeah. On a dry day. That is so much more easier. Still challenging. We haven't got to worry about your back wheel sliding and your front wheel washing out. See this bit's any easier. I thought it was easier. It was a lot shorter. A much shorter section. This bit shouldn't be too bad. It's definitely going to be interesting coming down this on the way back. Oh, pardon me. There has been lots of rain. Oh, I look how I'm washing out again. Oh, you hear the tire. Have I mentioned? I'm disappointed with that effort. Be interesting to come back up here. Get my favourite tires on. WTBs on. That was very disappointing. Well, that was a slain out again. This bit's relatively flat. Hey. So that's the challenging climb over. The rest of this, just a nice flowing bridle path. First section over, get to this little farm, go through the farm and down the farm lane, and you pick up the bridle path again on the other side. Out in front, actually you can see, that's where we're heading, up and along the side of that hill. Just went through two gates there, so we've got another gate down here at the bottom, just be aware of the gates. more gates. Oh, it's very picturesque down here. Right. So this is no one of those climbs. It's not technical this one. It's just steep and tiring. But yeah, we're just going to continue along that track there, through the wall. And here comes the rain. Bloody hell. Right, for now, that's most of the climbing done. So we'll get the trout back. We're just going to continue along this lane. It gets fast, some little downhill sections. Oh, there's quite a descent.
bloody water. Getting 16 miles an hour already. Just be away pedestrians. Sure on the right there. That's where we'll come back up. Let's go. up here where our car is now there's a left turn we'll take that now this is a start it's your first major challenge of climb on the way back we will be coming down here, so remember about them water breaks. But these ones will definitely have your tails. Oh. Walk in the park. So once you've left the road, you just continue all the way up here. It's an obvious track. You're going to go past some absolutely lovely houses. Lovely houses tucked away on the hillside. And we're going to continue up this rocky, grassy track, which I have never made up on my pushy bike. Ah, what I will say about this e-bike is I'm definitely riding a lot more. That's good. I'm riding the uphills, which is I'm riding the downhills. So I do like that. Again, once you've done your loop, you're coming back down all of this. So, if you're looking at it, thinking it looks fun to ride down, you're in luck because you're going to be coming back down it. But the other side is a way more interesting descent. Why? And you definitely don't want to push up on the other side. So, I just follow this. Heading up towards Goldburn Pass in the background, down the road is a little chalet site. And the back there is the back end of Troutbeck. Lovely little place, Troutbeck. Not very much there. 
which means and up the back there, that hill on the top, that's back of Wansfeld Peak, which if you're in Ambleside, you can see it. That way, over there, that's the back of your Kirkstone Pass. So when you are riding down this way, you just need to be aware of all these loose rocks. It's not so much that you slide through them, but more that you kick a lot of them up and you can feel them on your frame, on your bottom bracket, bouncing off it. And it's just as, uh, oh, I'm fucking sliding out. Uh, slippy. God damn it. As I was saying, when you're flying down there, you can go really fast, but you kick up so much rock, you just feel it hitting your bottom bracket and off your frame, and sometimes off your shins, and it knocks. Here we are, halfway up Garburn Pass. In the distance, get the magic finger out again. Somewhere up that way. Yep, up there. Whew. And over there, that's where we came from. So we're kind of over the back of that way. But well, that was the steep hill we came down. Then we cut down through the village and climbed up and all the way up here. And then we've got this bit to continue to climb. It's very loose, very rocky. And if you are coming down this way, be prepared to kick up a lot of big boulders. You can hear them rattling like mad off your bottom bracket. It's quite scary when you keep thinking you put a stone through your frame. But yeah, it's still good fun. Oh my god, this is fun. Oh, can I up here? Wow. Nice. Still heading up. It's one big climb. Uh, but while we're heading up, may as well talk about the start of the ride. So this is another ride where you start on Ambleside. Now jump to where you want to park. Definitely stay one of the long stay car parks if you paint the park. And this time, rather than go through the park, you're heading out. Bamble side on the one way system. Now, what I like to do, because normally I park in the lower car park, kind of just below the bowling green, the pitch and put area, and I ride up the one way system, take a right up past the bus concourse, then at the top, the only way you can go is right, so we head right. If you've come from the other car park on the outskirts of Ambleside, more towards Grasmere, this is where that road will meet up on the one way. So, whichever one you're in, whichever car park, it brings it to the same spot. So, once you've turned right at that junction, I went straight over, you'll see a hill on the left start to climb up. Now you can take that one, a bit hilly, and it drops down again before the start of the climb, or you can just along the road, past the garage, till you come to a, a car park, kind of between some hotels, and just on the opposite side, just throw it down a little bit, is the garden centre. From there, just cut through the car park, and you're on that same lane, which you'll see in the video at the start. I hope that was clear. One thing I've learned about the lakes, the gates never seem to work. You either open them and the jam, they fall off the hinges nearly, or the gate's too heavy and it drops to the floor and gets wedged between a rock or a fence or a wall. And then when you're shutting them, you've always got to lift them to try and get them back on, or scrape them again past the wall. And on top of that, all the gates always seem to be different. 
So it's pretty obvious when you've made it at the top of Garburn Pass. That's basically it. Trail totally changes, becomes flatter, the hillside's more open and more exposed, and it's just yeah, it's obvious. So we've come all the way up, just followed the main track all the way up, don't go off anywhere else, just follow the same track all the way. And then Down there behind us, that's Kentmere, that's where we're heading. This is where the trail gets really interesting, becomes very rocky and very bumpy and steep. Um, that's definitely not the way you want to ride up, because you're just not going to ride it. So if you're planning on doing this route, do it from Amble side and over. Because you'll not enjoy pushing the bike, hiking the bike up there. Not a chance. Here we go. So this is it. This is the descent into Kempia. This is the reason why you come up here and why you're riding this way. As you can see already, it's very rocky, very loose. This is only the start of it. <laughs> it's good. Cautious. Now. There we go. I'll have to be like this on it too. Put that little foot down. Got the bracket caught there. Oh shit. And there you go. That's how loose and slippy it is. Front wheel washed out there. Tactical dismount. <sighs> but yep, that's what you've got to watch out for. Whew. Yeah, wet handle grip. So, some arsehole looks like they put a hunk of wire across the trail. Which arsehole would do that? That looks deliberate, as someone's actually tried to put a trap across the trail. Absolutely shocking. That was lucky. So, up over there. Bastards, eh? People out to hurt you, out to kill you. I've never ever come across that before. Never come across that, but that was definitely deliberate. It was stretched right across the track. Anyway, back to the descending. I'm not sure if it's just because of an e-bike being heavier or whatever, but you do feel like you kicked up a lot more stone than usual. You know, ha, interesting lines. You really do want to go fast down here, but you can. Unless you're really good skilled rider, you don't want to go up Four stones off the bottom bracket. Lots of them on here. Well, lots of line choice. Yeah. I'm definitely changing these tires, I'm sure. The thing about this trail as well is every time you come down, it rocks from a different position. Yeah. Oh, yeah, different position. Oh, that's how slippy it is. Don't know if I'm riding this better, you just got to off or what? But, see, we got down that bit a lot quicker than I remember. Get to the water splash. Water splash. Now I go. Drop down. There we go. Doesn't look very steep from here, but that's basically what we've just come down. Quite interesting the day. It's a bit wet and slippy. Uh, washed out, which you would have saw on the GoPro. Quite amusing. Then after that, gets back on my bike, 
and someone's hard wire across the trail. But yeah, anyway, from here, we're going to continue down here, past the little wall, and down to Kentmere. Still a lot more rocky sections to go. But if you're coming down that first bit and you feel tired, give yourself a break here. Yeah. And here we go again. Ah, it is a nice little trail, this. Nice one, it's not wet, so I'm getting soaked. Trying to ride up this. Not going to happen. I can't even ride down it. We're oh. stuck, young. Oh. Uh. Hey, here's another good little spot. Just to give you a rest. A few seconds rest. Oh, God, you can feel that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here we go again. Back out. Yeah, good idea. That. Uh. And there's no quickly drop down. That's pretty much it for the descent. That's the last little section on the Kentry itself. And that's pretty much it. Oh. Definitely interesting coming down that lane, anyway. Is it better or worse? <laughs> 